Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, is it, can I start or? Yeah? Okay. <coughs> yeah. Sorry for the video, I'm going to cough a bit. But. Uh, so, yeah, I'm uh, Elodie Chabrol. I'm um, an ex researcher in uh, neuroscience, actually. I did my PhD in Paris, and then I did two postdocs in London. And during my second postdoc, I funded the Pint of Science Festival. Do you, have you heard about it? Okay. Uh, so I founded the Pint of Science Festival and during four years I've been handling Pint of Science France and postdoc uh, at UCL London and at one point I decided it was a bit too much. So I left uh, research to do just science communication. So it's been two years I'm doing just science communication. For a year I was just um, three uh, full time sorry, on uh, Pint of Science International. So basically selectioning new countries and, and helping them to set up the festival. And now I'm freelancing um, for any kind of science communication project. So usually it goes to other researchers doing some trainings and things like that. Or it can go to research institutes. Uh, basically everything that has to do with science. And I do a lot of uh, consulting on um, science communication and social network. So this is what I'm going to talk about today. And I'm going to start with a question. Uh, who has a Twitter account that um, you're using quite often, I mean, at least every week? Three, four, okay. Um, are you sharing science on that account? Okay, when I say, okay, so how often do you use it? Um, personally, I use it often, Yeah. Okay, and you read things, right? You're reading things? On, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 And you have a blog, so you must be a bit, <laughs> a bit more active. Like, you're reading, you're posting your blog things. Um, Okay. Um, usually I start with, uh, oh yeah. Uh, so why doing some science communication? But well, I think you're probably all convinced science communication is good. Yeah. Um, usually the arguments are, um, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, that it makes you a good communicator. And even if you want to stay in academia, it's still good because when you want to convince uh, juries, panels, uh, anything, it's quite nice um, to get grants as well. Um, now, some grants are asking for uh, how you're going to talk about your project to the public, so it's good to actually go ahead and start doing it. Uh, it's really important to have a dialogue between the scientists and the public. We're in uh, a time where the public doesn't really trust scientists, so I think um, it's really good if we start having this dialogue. We can talk about that more after if you want, but uh, I think I'm going to have to say a lot about Twitter. And also because it can be fun. So today, um, I'm going to talk a bit about why um, you should use Twitter. I'm going to show you the tools. So the ones that didn't raise their hand, are you using Twitter at all? Or yeah, just not often. Who created an account for today? OK. <laughs> it's OK, so some stuff, I'm sorry, it's going to be super basic for you. But you, you are still going to have some tips that probably I'm going to help you ask for. Um, so why should you use Twitter? Um, well, you, um, it's helping you to be aware of what other people are doing. And often, you know, okay, we're reading papers, but sometimes when you read papers, it's like news are sometimes a year or two years old. Okay, it's good to meet people at meeting, but you don't always see everything. And Twitter can be a good way. Honestly, there are more and more scientists on Twitter, so it can be a really good way to actually look for some stuff and some new work that wouldn't be available to you otherwise. Um, it's also a nice community. As I said, lots and lots of scientists, more and more scientists are on Twitter. And there is some kind of like community sense on Twitter about science. So it's, it's nice, you can share lots of things. And also it can be a good support network, not just um, to talk about work, but also to talk about what it's like in academia. because. Uh, you know, not everyone gets it. Um, your family might not be from academia. Sometimes when you do a postdoc or a PhD, it can be 
quite a lot of pressure and people around you might not be aware of that. And well, tweet people on Twitter that might be, you know, going through the same thing. It's quite nice to have chats about that, uh, especially when you can use hashtags like PhD Live and things like that. So about uh, what's happening during the PhDs. Also, it's a really good place um, to find out about conferences, workshops, funding opportunities um, that you wouldn't see otherwise. It's just, it's, it's really nice when you, you follow people that are interested in the same things um, as you are. You can definitely see things that you wouldn't you would have missed otherwise. And obviously, um, it's really nice to share your own work. Uh, if you want to try tweeting right now, during the whole hour, please do it. I've put a, a hashtag for, for the day. Uh, well, day, day 19, because you know, I thought it would, be, it would be okay. So if you, know, you do it with your computer or your phone, just don't hesitate, but you're gonna have to try things uh, anyway. So, you know. Um, one thing that um, I don't know—I don't know if you know it—who um, is familiar with altmetric? Okay. Huh? Okay. <laughs> so uh, this is altmetric donuts, and so it looks really nice in rainbow. In real life, I'm going to show you in a second. It doesn't always look like that. But the idea is that altmetric is basically um, getting all the information about attention online objects. So basically, if your paper, so your, your DOI, you know, your, your science paper, it's being shared on um, anything, so blogs, Twitter, Facebook, Wikipedia, um, um, LinkedIn, Reddit, Google, uh, professional, actually it's still professional network, uh, YouTube, even Pinterest, uh, you know, which is like very much like, um, basically at metrics is going to get the statistics, statistics and tell you uh, you know, where your paper has been shared. So, in ideally, it looks super nice in rainbow. Uh, I've tried it with <laughs> my Pinterest paper and it looks very blue. But it's okay. Um, so, that's a real example um, of a paper. And it's a paper of 2019, so it's quite, still quite new. So, maybe it's going to be super rainbowish next year. Or maybe not, actually. <laughs> But you know, one can dream. Um, and the thing is, you put your DOI and then you see the donuts. The cool thing is that you can see it's been mentioned by people on Twitter, 22 here. Uh, it's been uh, read by people on Mendeley. So you can actually have metrics about your papers online, which is good because when you have a blog, you can see um, you know, metrics about your blog post. But your science paper, sometimes it's really nice to have actual metrics about what's happening and be aware of um, people sharing what you didn't expect. If you click on Twitter, for example, uh, you can see who tweeted it. On the free version, you have the five last tweets on your paper. Uh, if you, the university of the school might have the, the paid version and then you have access to everyone who tweeted it. Uh, but now that our grants are actually asking for how we're going to disseminate your research, that are good data that you can have on all the papers that you have. That's quite nice. And it's just to show you as well that Twitter counts, you know, on like sharing uh, and science publication and sharing paper. Okay, so um, let's dive into Twitter now. Um, so who has a profile picture? Ah, good, okay, who has a cover picture? Uh, who has a like a, a proper bio with like explaining what they are? Okay, with um, some handles, so with some links. <laughs> okay, so um, first thing first, um, Elosha19, this is my handle. So this is the, the way uh, we call it for someone's name on Twitter. At uh, if you use that, for example, if right now you put something with at elosha19, blah, 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 I'm going to have a notification that it talks about me. Um, when you start Twitter, <coughs> you really want to have a good bio because it just means that people, when they land on your account, if they don't know who you are, they might not follow you and you might actually miss interactions that could be nice. So, for example, if you see those two, um, 
the first one, you see it's like sharing some stuff about science. So you might actually um, you might actually follow that person. But the second one, you know, you don't really know who they are, what are what they are going to talk about. So uh, will you follow that person? No. So, so don't be that person. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Um, a good bio is basically going to explain what you're going to talk about. So for my for example, I said I was a neuroscience PhD, I'm a print science communicator, and I also talk a lot about kind of science. Um, so I said director at Science World and a director at Science Science FR. So those are links. It's good to put them because if you say I'm a director at Science Science and you just write it and you don't put the link, what if someone doesn't know Science of Science? You know, they would have to Google it or go and like look for what is Science of Science. If you put the link, they know exactly what you're doing. So for example, for you, um, there is a at that's for sure. So you could say postdoc, PhD, ISONS, working on blah blah blah. Um, if you have some hashtags that you know uh, you might use or you're interested in, like science communication, but it's really good to basically have at least profile picture. Uh, cover is always nice, and you can put whatever. You know, it doesn't have to be uh, science. It could be a, a, I don't know if you're doing some uh, some image thing. It could be a nice image. It could be even like something if you like. Hiking, uh, you know, it, it doesn't have to be related to science. It's just, it's nice to have that. If you if you look at that kind of profile, it feels like they are actually not finished, or people are not using them. You know, it feels like, you know, it's not going to be used. I don't know what's going to happen there, so I'm not going to follow Musa or whatever because you know I don't know who she is. Um, so um, have a, a nice thing. I also tweet in French and in English, so I put it there. Um, just to be sure people will like expect that because that, that can be a bit weird when you know you have French tweets and then English tweets like this, uh, they know. So you know, they follow me there. Um, okay. So you can actually do it now if you want. So let's uh, um, so let's dissect a tweet. So um, most of the things I've, I've put that is, is my tweets because it's, it's easier, it's not someone's uh, work. So um, I like emojis, so I put emojis, but you don't have to. Uh, usually a good tweet, um, so you have hashtags. Um, actually, yeah. So who knows what a hashtag is? Yeah, OK. Do you know that if you click on it on Twitter, you see everything that is related, all the tweets that have the hashtag? So it's very important. When you go to a uh, science event, it's good to know what's the real hashtag that they use and not starting to use your own or you know, one that is looking a bit the same, but not exactly, because then it would mean that if someone was looking for tweets about that event and that day, they would miss yours. So you have to check. Um, it's also good to have so uh, links and an image. So exactly like you said for the blog, actually, if uh, there is no image, you're not necessarily your eyes not going to stop on it. So imagine, I think I don't remember the length, uh, like the kilometers length that we're scrolling every day or every month. But it's, it's crazy how much we're scrolling. And if you don't have an image, you don't stop on that. Okay, so always have an image. I'm going to explain after how to, to make it good. Um, so under uh, the tweet, you have several things. So this is reply. So that goes directly to the tweet and the people, the person that tweeted it. So you reply on that. Retweet is you really like it and you decide, oh, I'm going to retweet and it's going to appear on my profile. Okay, so a reply is different. A reply is really like, it's not appearing on your profile as it's as your tweet. Retweet is really something you have to agree with. You can retweet two different ways. Do you know them? Yeah, like uh, either you just retweet like this and it feels like you just didn't put something more, or yeah. you can add a kind of Yeah, so when you press retweet, Retweet here. Um, you can you have the choice between just retweeting and retweeting with comments. The comment appears at the top, so you can say anything. If you think it's really an interesting paper, you can write uh, interesting. You can even add some hashtags or something like that. Um, like when you like a tweet, 
Um, so Twitter is evolving. Before, when you liked a tweet, um, it was just you liked it, and you had the list of tweets you liked on your account. Now, when you like the tweets, um, it's a bit like Facebook. It's sharing it to other people. So be careful with what you like. <laughs> yeah. still see replies and likes like mm -hmm. it was before it's just that before you had to go on the profile to see it and now uh, on people's feed everything you like is actually like you shared it uh, okay, okay. so, 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 so you, you have no way to no easy way to bookmark tweet for yourself and no one knows what you have bookmarked uh, no. that the like was before no. yeah no. you can bookmark bookmark yes. okay. so there's something that is bookmark Ah, okay. But you have to click on the ah, little okay. arrow. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, likes now are public. Mm, okay. And it's like sharing. Yeah, of course. They won't ever so be basically, if you really that. like something, <laughs> yeah, and you don't feel like. Maybe more interesting. Right? Exactly. So you have to be sure you're not liking you know, uh, things that you might regret after. Um, and you also have the activity here. So activity is nice because um, you can check. Um, Impressions. So impressions are the technical number of people that have seen your tweet. So it's calculated with basically how many people like it, how many uh, followers are there, and if they scrolled. So it's quite like basic, uh, like calculation feature, but basically impression means that someone had it on their feed. It doesn't mean that they read it. Uh, it just means that they had it. And then you have engagements on your tweets, which are uh, actual actions that people did either like it, either even click on links, or anything basically that you did on your tweet, like retweet, retweet with comments, click on the link and everything. So it can be nice to see uh, how many uh, did, if it's just like two people, you and uh, your cat, or uh, actually more than that, you can see. Um, yeah, so those are um, the activity, for example. So impressions, is that time people saw this, um, engagements, for example, here I had 34 engagements. Uh, it could be likes, it could be a uh, number of clicks on your media, it could be retweets. Uh, the list is a bit longer, I didn't uh, everything, but basically this is like everything that happened on your tweet. Uh, on one tweet, so you know, you can go check all of them, it takes a bit of time. You have Twitter analytics as well, that I didn't put there, but that shows you what's the best tweet, how many people it reached, and everything. So you can see like, the numbers of the number, for example, what is the best thing. Um, yeah, so uh, before, uh, so it's, it's evolving, like I said. Before, you had the number of uh, following, the number of followers. You had also the likes uh, and the list and everything. Now, a Twitter account looks like that, basically. Um, so, for example, you have uh, an Urm account, so if you put on your profile, you can always, you know, uh, put that link. It's, it's really good. So, how you should start? Um, so, if you just start on Twitter, the good thing is you can start by observing. You follow interesting accounts and you look how people are interacting and, you know, you start reading. Um, if you want to go a bit further, you can start by just retweeting, you know, like press retweet, leave a comment and, and post. Then uh, you can go a bit further and start retweeting with comments and then you can start tweeting about like organic things that you decide, like your papers, uh, blog posts that you like, um, anything, any, any news. Um, so basically, the tweets that you, 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 you write or you share, um, they can lead to share information to reply to articulate to conversation if you see something you want, you want to take part. Uh, sorry, uh, you can be to give an opinion. Be very careful with the opinion you give because you know your people uh, might react and it be like a bit uh, complicated to handle. So yeah. Uh, could be to like it and then yeah. Yeah, could you have a comment a little bit on more of your thoughts about the trade-off between free speech and you addressing controversial topics and so, um, people are writing on Twitter, um, opinions are my own, to show that uh, what they are saying is basically their individual opinion and not reflecting the, the, the organization they are working for. Uh, what I say is that just do it like be yourself, do like you would do in real life, but don't be 
possible to delete a tweet though. It is but possible, but if people is. retweet it with comments, it's, uh, yeah, then it becomes not available. But uh, sometimes, honestly, you have, it's okay to delete one tweet. One thing that um, is difficult is that if you, for example, I had the, the example of a, a, a student that tweeted stuff, and then she decided to leave Twitter, so she closed the account, she left. But now she's super ashamed of what she tweeted like five years ago. But she closed the account, so she couldn't go back and delete the tweets. Mm -hmm. So they are there. And when you type her name, sometimes if you scroll enough, you can find the tweets. So, so, so when an account is deleted, the tweets are not? The tweets, if someone retweeted it at that time, I think it can, you can find the trace. You know, I'm not going to tell you it's completely safe and everything. When you delete your tweet, normally it's okay. But that's the thing, deleting your tweet is, uh, normally it's not something that you do much, you know, or when you realize actually what's bad, but then if it has so many reactions and people can screenshot it as well. So if it's really something bad and people screenshot the tweet and then you delete it, yeah, it's not there anymore, but maybe someone has an image of it. And then, so, yeah. So um, I guess the related topic would be do you tweet about anything or do you consider that you use Twitter only for professional um, usage? So you only tweet about science or science? Or you only tweet about scientific communication? So um, I basically tweet on mostly on science communication, but also on stuff I use on the side. Um, because you don't refrain yourself. No, uh, no, but the thing is like, I'm also, I'm trying also to be very positive and cheerful most of the time. So that's the thing, like, uh, for example, you know, yes, I post about, uh, I went hiking this summer, so I post about the hike. Uh, I do think I like to also show um, behind the scenes of Find the Sands, because I'm like, oh yeah, Find the Sands, it's, um, you know, when people say I'm working in events, 
uh, it must be like super glittery and glamorous and then basically I take pictures of all the, bo the, the boxes I prepare for the festival that I send to 50 cities and I'm like yeah this is glamour box one and this is uh, uh, sparkle box two and I tell everyone like this is what organizing a festival is that's more like it's not strictly like um, promotion for the festival you know it's not just like oh get your ticket for five cents but it's also behind the scenes and like yeah I basically spent a day uh, like underground boxing uh, so, so I, I do pay off everything but also I do uh, where I like to interact on Twitter um, mm -hmm. because I feel like there are less chances that you're going to say something you'll be ashamed of if you're talking about um, science or something that is, doesn't have political implications or like yeah. the less personal your tweet is the, the less risky it's different you have personal and political you, you can be personal and political is different. You can be super personal. Can, uh, like I, I uh, tweet pictures of my cats as well. Okay. She's cute. Okay. And she does stuff that are quite cute sometimes. And, and you know, cute you animals on Twitter, it's always nice. Do you uh, get new followers with your cats? I do get new followers, but I know people like them, so usually they comment on them. But um, it's personal. Mm. But it's not necessarily political. But if you're strongly about political, uh, you know, ideas and you're like very much about that, uh, it's it's a good way to talk about it. It's just be careful because it's safe. And and some people actually like say really bad stuff and then they delete the, the tweets, but then people take screenshots and they keep basically traces for like forever of what you said. Um, so so to be careful. Okay. Uh, can I move on? <laughs> um, when you tweet, always try to give sources. Uh, if it's a paper, if it's a, a journal, if it's whatever, um, just uh, do it. Uh, check your spelling, don't do like me. <laughs> um, because that we are present at 1 p.m. So, yeah. But still, if you tweet at 1 p.m., uh, check your spelling. And also, um, the thing that works well with Twitter is just don't need to self centered uh, you have some backup files like, oh, this is what I do, oh, this is what I do, oh, this is what I do, by the way. And uh, replying to other people by, oh, by the way, I've published just that. And it's a bit annoying. Uh, and they don't, actually, people are not trying to that much because they, they tend to get a bit annoying. And it's just basically like, me, 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 me. And it's like, um. Um, so, you know, it's nice to share some of the things that you like, that you find interesting, not always just your work. Uh, okay, so the hashtags, uh, you know what it is. So basically, one hashtag can link uh, lots of tweets. So you can see I did it like yesterday because the hashtag I was trending was the meilleur pâtissier. Basically, um, if a lot of people are using the same hashtag, then it's trending. Okay? Um, so yeah, yesterday, uh, lots of people were tweeting about the meilleur pâtissier when I prepared the. Uh, the the workshop um, trending can be also super fast. Okay, it's not because something is trending a minute that it's going to be trending a second later. So basically, it's just a little comment saying, um, you know, a guy is asking, oh, what everyone is talking about, and then Twitter is like, oh, I'm going to explain, and it starts explaining what's happening, and then the guy said, oh, I'm going to make a joke about it, and then Twitter's like, no, that's too late now. It's not trending anymore. <laughs> so that's just to show you like how quick things can be trending and not trending. Yeah. So, um, more or less related is how do you avoid getting drawn by the amount of tweets? Because of course you're going to open a thread and so people are saying interesting things and so you try to just start to open links and in a few minutes you just completely drawn, drawn by many, uh, too much information. So how can you uh, keep track and, and not be overwhelmed? So it depends because the things that are trending, um, for example, it's often not necessarily <coughs> super interesting for you. Uh, like the mayor that's you know, uh, yeah, no, if you want to share science at that time, yeah, you're going to have lots of tweets on the mayor that's And if you check uh, the latest, yeah, it's going to be lots of information. Uh, when you're at an event, uh, you're going to have lots of information coming. Um, but it's going to be like about an event and it's going to be usually like one or two days restricted. Uh, once you start writing a tweet, it's good to focus and just do that and then, you know, read what's happening uh, 
um, at the same time. But yeah, it's true that sometimes when something's trending, it's just lots of tweets at the same time, and it's crazy. But um, it is nice as well because you can just retweet stuff or retweet with comments instead of just writing one. Um, we also, uh, I have to say, we also managed to get uh, PhD defense trending in Europe. <laughs> this is the power of science communication. There was a friend of us that was uh, defending his PhD and decided to create a hashtag for his defense and we were like 20 people tweeting like crazy during two hours and we were third in Europe. So it means that it was the third most used hashtag at one point in Europe. And that's a PhD uh, thesis, so it's, it's quite nice. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of information, but usually you can retweet or just like, and, and you have some tools that I'm going to show you just uh, after of how you can basically um, group, group things that happen in one thing. Like if you are at an event and you have lots of tweets going about lots of uh, interesting stuff, at the moment it's too much, you don't want to do anything about that, you retweet your event and that's it. Then you have a, a tool that is called a moment where you can group tweets from people, not yours, just in like one to one moment and give it a name and put a picture. So if you go to a conference and you want to create a moment about this conference quietly later, you can do it. Hashtags, it's not like the trending is very, um, so it's very instantaneous. Basically, it's going to trend a minute, the minute after it might not trend. It doesn't mean that the hashtag disappears. Okay, like five days later, you can always come back, type the hashtag, and see all the tweets about the hashtag. It's just that when it's trending, it means that lots of people are talking about it right now. And in five minutes, you can do different. And so I guess this is great if you don't wish to interact, but if you wish to interact, then you know, when you're going to open the moment after a few days, then, then it's going to be too late. Um, it depends because it de like at conference, for example, it's nice to see everyone talking about it and you can actually go and meet them in real life. Um, so it, it can help you to see like who's talking about what sometimes, oh, that this person is in the same room than, than me and I wanted to talk to that person, so now I have to Twitter, uh, it's a good thing Twitter has a, she has a, he has a profile picture because now I can actually go and hunt for them. Um, but that, that it's, it's a tool that can help you. It's not like the answer to everything. It can help you with something. Yeah. Just to answer about the being overwhelmed, normally on your feed, it's only what do people that you're following are sharing. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, so yes, that. And also, you can read it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I can spoil it. Um, so, the, the hashtag is basically anyone that talks about the hashtag and people you don't follow. Mm -hmm. On your thread is people, only people you follow. And the cool thing is that you can make lists that are super useful because it's only a few or a, how many you decide accounts that you decide to follow. So for example, on your account, you could have like five lists. They, like each list would have a different subject and a different focus. And if you want to focus on something during the a day, for example, you just look what people are sharing on that list. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to do that. Um, so thread, you want to come up thread. Do you know what a thread is? Yes? Okay. Um, so basically a thread is uh, when you have to say more than one tweet. Okay. So to make it, um, you start doing your first tweet and then you have this little plus here. So this is for weeks about what happened uh, in the next or about something like uh, one day it was full of like thanks, no prizes, for example, something like that. Um, and you want to have several tweets about that thing, you can create a moment. So that is only on computers. You can't create moments on, on phones. Um, you have to go on your profile and you click on more and then you have moments and you click on it. You say create a moment and you give it um, the name you want. Uh, you put a description so people know what it is. Um, sometimes you also can add a, a cover picture. And then you're going to add tweets to this moment. And then it has a, a URL address that you can share. So then you can say, oh, this is the moment I made about that thing. And people can read it and see it. And it's 
kept in your account. It's just that to create it, it's um, computer only. And it's nice because it only motivates for everyone to do it so that you can uh, group into one place um, and just have it and share it. So lists, um, lists are really good because they can help you to focus on things and also um, sometimes like discover new, new people. So for example, uh, for this is my account, uh, she's doing lots of science communication. Um, if you want to see, so you can either create a list or you can also subscribe to people's list. So for example, uh, Marlon does really good science communication and I want to see what are her lists. So I click on the three dots here. And then you have lots of things, but also you have view list of view moments. So this is how you see moments now on people's profile. Uh, you can also so click on view lists. And this is a, a tiny bit of uh, what she has, for example. So she has a list of uh, women in science fiction. You can see that. 24 members, it means that she has put 24 people in that <coughs> list. So if you follow it, it's going to be a list of 24 people tweeting about or being women in sci-fi, tweeting about stuff. Uh, she has images, uh, you have um, YouTubers that are talking about culture, for example. Um, if you click on the list, you will see um, the tweets. So it's like a feed, basically, of everyone that is in this list posted. You can see the members. And you can also see the subscribers, which are basically people that decided to follow that list. Um, and you can click subscribe at the top in blue. And that means that it's going to be in your list, in your list of lists, even. Um, and if one day you just want to focus on that thing, for example, and not have like all the other uh, people you follow usually, um, you can you can do that. You also. Um, so this is uh, my thing. You are also sometimes people are putting you in lists, and you don't always get notifications for that. Uh, so it's nice sometimes to just check. Uh, for example, this is the, the list I'm in. Uh, people just you know decide, oh yeah, she's talking about that. Let's put her in this list. So it's, it's always good to, to, to check. Uh, but lists are really a really nice way to be able to focus on things. Uh, and also if you want to share things uh, with people and say, oh look, I've made a really interesting list on cognitive sciences, for example, and you share it. And people can just subscribe and follow that. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, do you know that there are two types of things? The ones that are not sure. Not sure? <laughs> Okay, uh, there are two types of trends, so you can either decide a location trend, okay, so, so for example, right now in Paris, what is trending, or what is in France, or any other place, what is trending, but you also have, so if you go in the um, settings for, when you go in the search and you go in the settings, the trends, you can either change the location or click on trends for you. Trends for you, basically, it's what's trending amongst your follow the people you follow. So they are going to be super different. Uh, they are going to be super different from um, trends in a location. Okay, for example, if I did trend for me yesterday, I wouldn't have had many of it here first uh, yesterday evening. It would have been something about science weather. Um, so it, it can be nice, it's just that don't get too excited when you see, ah, oh, this thing is trending. And if it's trends for you, it means that if you follow people that talk about it, it's actually trending, but it doesn't mean it's like the most used hashtag in front or whatever. It's just that people around you talk about that a lot. Um, but still nice to see trending. And it's, it's good as well because uh, if you click on trends for you, you can just see you know, what people that you follow talk about. If you have any questions, just uh, stop me. Okay, you have also, uh, when you go to an event, you have two types of uh, live that you could do. Uh, you have the live video that is like Facebook a bit. You basically 
uh, like click the compose icon to so the, the little feather and then you can do a live video so the, the thing is the red dots uh, and then you just like do a live video of what's happening and it shows normally um, when you do search I think the live videos they show they show at the top um, yes when you have any followers doing a live video they show at the top uh, but you can also do a live tweet exactly what they said written on, on Twitter uh, but it's quite nice and also it has the power to actually allow people that are not physically there to follow what's happening so this is a tool that is quite nice for events it's basically making sure that people can have access to it even if they are let's say in US where it is in Paris so it's quite nice um, usually we tend to have more and more uh, live Twitter uh, at events. For example, um, it's the Fête de la Science this week, and you have uh, the uh, FDS Live reporters, so it's students that are going to go to events and live tweet to be sure that basically everyone uh, can follow some events, uh, even if they are not there. So it's, it's quite nice. Uh, it's, it's nice uh, to share you can see conferences or events just following on Twitter with the right hashtag of the day, you can just see what happened. It's really nice. And you can go there and you actually can still a bit participate sometimes also uh, when you organize an event and people want to ask questions, they use it with the, they read the live tweets and they reply and they ask questions and you can actually like incorporate their questions in your event. So it's, it's quite powerful. Yeah. So I just have a question. Yeah. So, um, for instance, if we were to do a live tweet right now, it would be basically the same thing as doing a normal tweet, except that we call it live because it's not the same that we're doing that right now. Yes. And then we would make like one tweet, and then let's say like in 10 to 20 minutes, there's something else I want to comment. I would just go and click on reply, and then I would add that comment to it. So it depends on thread. So that would be a thread. Yeah. That is good if it's linked to the same thing. So yes, if it's yeah, yeah. like if for the same day, yeah, you could, you could. Okay. You could, you could either do a thread like once and for like once and share it like the whole thing, mm -hmm. or just add tweets. Yeah, but for like people tend to just add tweets, right? Or is it tend to be a... So what, sorry? For live like tweets, people yes. tend to make one tweet and then I like add onto it to create a whole thread. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, it really depends on people. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it depends on that side. Some people are gonna uh, make like Read on some key points and like two, three tweets. Some people are actually amazing at tweeting at the same time that they listen. So they can actually produce in an hour like, I don't know, 20 tweets, 30 tweets, like almost write the whole thing. They are listening to you and they are tweeting at the same time. And well, they can basically have the whole conference uh, in, in a tweet. 
uh, in like into the same frame. Uh, so it really depends how many. Uh, sometimes also you're going to tweet, people are going to ask you questions, they're going to maybe reply, you know, so. Um, but yeah, you can tweet and then reply to your first tweet and then keep on adding tweets like that or just decide to stop and then thread for the afternoon, for example. Mm -hmm. You could have like morning yeah, thread and then afternoon. Yeah. And uh, so I was looking at the same time, so you were talking about moments, and so I thought, yeah, it could be like a title, a description, and then if you look at the part where you can add tweets, uh, can you add your tweet at that point, or does it have to be? No, it has to be tweeted. It has to be tweeted. Yes, so mm -hmm. moments are usually made after. Okay. It's like, it's like a recap of what happened. Uh, it doesn't have to be like days later, it could be like just after. Yeah. But it has to be things that are tweeted. So then on your profile, you'll have the uh, independent tweets, and then you'll have your moment with all the tweets in the moment. Yes. But it's not necessarily your tweets in the moment. It can yeah. be like anyone's. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's the thing. So it, okay. it's like a group of tweets that you found interesting about this subject. And that's the cool thing about moments is that you can group tweets that you did with tweets that are not yours. That's the big difference to a thread. A thread is basically just you tweeting about stuff. Moments are um, tweets that anyone actually uh, tweeted. Yeah. That you put, and it's like, moments are a bit nicer. Tw threads are it's just like tweets that you can like um, enroll to basically see like all of them. Uh, moments, it's basically like you have the description, it's a bit more like uh, uh, edited, you know, you have like a code, mm -hmm. like, you know, just tweets, it can be a bit longer than if you put links mm -hmm. in it. Uh, I would say normally when you have links, five, eight tweets is like the limit because people read and then they go to the links and then they have more to mm -hmm. read and then they read the, like the follow-up and, and it's, it's quite a lot to read. But if it's just things that people say, like, it could be more, because basically you just read it as you would read like a, a page or something. So it depends what's, uh, what's the, the content of your tweets. Okay. If it's like lots of work to read, then less. Yeah. And some people, you know, sometimes it's just, it's not about getting like many people, it's about getting the right people. So if you actually want to say something, and it's important and you think you have to make your point and it might be a bit long, mm -hmm. people that are interested are going to read it. And those are the people you want to reach. Yeah. So at the end, you know, it's, it, it really depends on what you want to say. And, and your community as well, because um, at the very beginning when you don't have many followers, you know, it's a bit hard to know what to do. But the more you go, the more followers you have, the more you know what they're interested in and you, you also know what's going to be okay to do or not to do. So that's the thing, like you are going to know your community, you're going to know how they respond to what you do usually, and, and, and if it's too long, they're going to tell you, so you won't know next time. So yeah, practically, like I said, uh, you have to verify the hashtag of the event, um, and it's always nice to include photos, uh, if it's like about the, um, the slides or whatever, but it's, it's nice to have some photos. If you have links as well that you think might be interesting to put in, it's, it's always nice to do that. Okay, when, um, so the perfect tweet. When you want to share stuff about your science, if you want to do science communication to the public, you need to realize that the public doesn't necessarily talk uh, with scientific words, and so you have to avoid jargon. So for example, this is, um, this is an account that I really like because it's a, a lab I worked with, but they share lots of papers and it doesn't make any sense <laughs> to anyone except people that are actually working on that. So it is super nice to share your paper. I'm not saying don't share your paper, but what you could do is that you can do a thread explaining what is your paper about in plain words and then share the link with the title that would actually talk to scientists. So in that case, you're reaching everyone and everyone's happy. And that's a good way of doing science communication, sharing your paper. Because when you just share that, it's nice. Researchers are going to be like, yeah, well done, you've done a, a frontiers in neuroscience uh, paper. But then the public is just going to, like, if you have followers that are not scientists, they are just going to look at that and be like, well, I might actually unfollow that account. And then it happens again. And again, and it's like, it's not possible. The first one is even worse, because it doesn't have any picture. Okay, this one is like, oh yeah, graphs, at least, you know. <laughs> I know what's happening there. But the first one is just a, a link to 
commit and it's not okay. Okay, so the, the best thing is to really start by explaining what is your paper about. You can also, lots of science communication is around um, life of the scientists, you know, how long did it take to arrive to that paper? Was it lots of work? Are you happy with it? You know, uh, how much, uh, how much a month have you worked on it or whatever? Um, and then share like the, the real title and, and pure paper that is going to be interesting for scientists. And if you want to click on it and actually see that it can be good, then you know you warn them about what's going to be the paper, but then share your paper. Um, but yeah, avoid jargon. Um, try to when well, there are hashtags to always use them. Um, that the one yeah. Oh, you can finish. My sentence. Thank you. Yes. Uh, the one that works really well when you want to share science communication is hashtag cyber. Yes. Uh, it's just so. Uh, for example, last month I was kind of pretty mad about some research I was doing because yeah. I thought that it could be interesting to people, but now I have some doubt regarding the fact that then can be published. Do you have any opinion on that? Like, can yes. you already say a little bit what your result cannot look like? What did you do? So, yes, but you have to be careful if you have sensitive results. Like, if you're going to, for example, uh, put a patent on it, you have to know what you can share and what you can't share. Um, I think as soon as you don't show like pure data and until it's not published, publish, it's okay you know, to talk about your subject because it's, it's what you do anyway. But don't really show you know, like proper graphs of okay. things. Uh, if it's not published or ask, you know, if it's been accepted to a journal, then you can probably do that and be like, oh, it's going to be in that journal. Uh, but um, I would be careful because you know sometimes it's uh, also you have modifications to do. You, you know you never really know what's happening, um, and yeah, sometimes you can check with your boss. You know what can I share? Uh, if you share stuff um, in meetings or conferences, people can take pictures of that, and if it's okay for them to share, then you know, that it's okay for you to share as well. Um, but just you know be careful of what you can and what you can. Because you have like super uh, like top secret data and it has to be published to actually be um, out because that's the same thing that concurrent can follow you and know what you're doing so you know if you're giving too much and you don't want to give too much you have to be careful but you can always go the cool thing with science communication to the public is that you don't have to go that much into details mm -hmm. so you can always say no it's true you don't have to always like show the graph you can talk about your project and what are the you know the stakes about your project? What you're doing? What's your work about? And that's still nice. No details. Um, you're safe. That's why I guess the situation is okay. Um, yeah. So like we said, always have a visual. Something super important because people always forget, and it's like really bad. <coughs> um, if you want to promote someone, uh, someone's work, or talk about a scientist that does really cool things. Um, or, I don't know, an event that is really good and you want to talk about that thing, so you start usually with hat, blah, 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 so the, the arrow bars, okay, and the name, and you think it's going to be great, it's going to do a great promotion, but that's considered by Twitter as a reply. So it means that only people already following that person and following you are going to see that tweet. So it's like a dead tweet, basically. So if you really want to start with at, you can always start with a dot before the at, okay? That's, uh, that's something like this mistake, everyone is doing it and it's just like, it's the worst because um, you're really trying to like promote something and it's actually doing nothing. Um, so either you can do a dot or just a little word, you know, before, uh, this is at blah, 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 and she is doing really cool work. Uh, we are at this event, so it never starts with the at, except if it's a reply. Uh, yeah, obviously, um, if you have to use emojis, uh, if it's your type of communication, don't hesitate. Um, they created new cool um, science emojis so long ago, so it's always nice. So, as I said, if there is sensitive content uh, or like patents that <coughs> might be uh, actually uh, put on your work, don't put too many details. And I'm going to finish quickly with uh, timing. So sometimes you want to tweet about things, but it's Sunday, it's midnight, you have lots of articles you want to talk about it on Twitter, but you realize that actually not many people might be there to see what's, you know, what you're sharing, and 
sharing like 10 tweets in an hour and then nothing for a week might actually not be the best. So you have a tool that is called Buffer, but you have lots of them. You have Hootsuite, uh, you have um, TweetDecker and everything. Buffer, I really like it for image reading. So this is free. You go, you sign in, and then um, you enter your, your uh, Twitter account. And then basically you can write a tweet, okay? Uh, like normally you can put the hashtags, you can uh, put like at anyone, whatever you like. When you put a link, the really good thing is that it's suggesting you a media, so an image, for example. And then you can pick the image that is going to go with your tweet, which is great because sometimes you have links, it's like a poker game, you don't know what's going to come out of your tweet. It can be a super nice image, it can be an image that is going to be related to your tweet, but you don't know what it's tweeting that. Here with Buffer, you can pick the one you want. And it's really good. Okay? So is it for both your phone and... Yeah, Buffer is on your phone. And it's because it's the app that you install. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it's free. Okay. And uh, you can, I think on your phone, you have to click on that and say, uh, pick an image with URL. And, or you can pick one in your gallery as well, on your phone. But that is really good because you can know how your tweet is going to look like and that is really good because honestly sometimes you have that surprises. But that's not the point of uh, this app. The point is to actually decide when you want to share. So if you want just to share a tweet really nice but share it now, you press on share now and it doesn't do that. If you want to actually plan it for whenever you want, you can just pick the date and the time. So if you decide you want to share lots of papers, but you don't want to share them all at once on Sunday night, you can spend an hour preparing all your tweets and basically like spreading them during the week. <coughs> you can decide, oh, I want one on Tuesday morning because, oh, I have the thing and then I will be able to reply all the comments on that. Uh, and then I want one on Wednesday afternoon, blah, blah, blah. You just decide and you, and you do and you set the frequency. You can have up to 10 free posts uh, like you can up to 10 free posts on uh, both of Twitter. There is another thing as well. Um, I'm almost done. So uh, there is one thing as well that is really nice. It's um, participative Twitter accounts. So basically those um, at Real Scientist and on Direct du Labo. Uh, it's two Twitter accounts that um, every week they are going to give their account to someone, to a scientist. And that scientist is going to talk about um, it's like his or her work, uh, everyday life, and everything. So it's really nice because it has an audience as well, uh, already there, so quite a lot for real scientists. It's 82K, 14K for Andrea Tulabo, which is like the French part, but it's, it's nice. You, can, you have people interested in science that are going to follow you, then it can always be nice for your own Twitter, you know, people that meet you there might actually still follow you after. Um, and it's nice to train. Uh, they, they, you can talk about uh, your work and then people are going to ask you questions. So it's really always nice to participate uh, into that kind of, um, of Twitter accounts. Okay, uh, just to recap, basically Twitter is nice because you can use it like a little personal press agency. You know, you just make lists of what you want to read and you can just read like, lots of things. You can have lots of resources of advice. Uh, you can also discover some professional networks or you can find, you have lots of uh, job offers on, on Twitter about science, like postdoc jobs, offers, stuff like that. Uh, and you can also share your work. If you want, uh, I've made those two, so the ones that just opened their account, I've made those two um, things. Uh, it's basically a big image.